In the previous video, we made our list enumerable by providing a get enumerator method that returns an I enumerator. We used yield to do that quickly, and you can refer to my yield videos if you want to learn more about yield. We have our list here. I changed it so we only add three items. Here's our three items. And then when we for each, we saw how for each just uses get enumerator and calls move next, move next on the enumerator and current. When we initially uh, initially get our enumerator, we also saw that our enumerator is referencing this sentinel non-existent value. In fact, let me actually do this again. I enumerator int rator gets my party ages 2. I don't know why I still have a 2 on there. Let me change it to just my party ages. My party ages dot get enumerator. And when I say console write line rater dot current, we get a zero. I see zero out here is the first value because this numerator is pointing to nothing essentially. I think this was a bad choice on Microsoft's part to return a zero. I, I really did something stupid here when I said, hey, give me the current value. Oh, I'm not really referencing the current value. Well, give it to me anyway. And then they say, oh, well, we'll say zero. Zero is a valid integer value. I really wish they would have thrown something in my face. In fact, it's been interesting to see how this has evolved over time. If I take the me off of list on both of these. Now I'm using the built-in list that Microsoft wrote. And I'm actually going to come out here and comment out the for each. And list came out with generics. And I believe, if I remember right, yield came out at the same time. So I assume they're using yield in here. I could be wrong, but if I control a five this, ah, we get a zero as well. No exception, no problem. But if I go back to the early days, the good old days, long before generics, and I go to this non-generic array list. Actually, the good old days wasn't pre-generics by any means, but but uh, as far as how this behavior was implemented, I'll say array list, array list. This is in the system.collections namespace. This is the list that Microsoft gave us before generics existed. And then I have to come down here and use the non-generic I enumerator. I, I already told you the sad story about how Microsoft shipped .NET before generics came out, and then generics came out in the second version. And now we have a non-generic and a generic version of pretty much everything. But let me go back to the old array list. And if I control a 5 on this, when I ask for the current object before saying move next, array list enumerator blows up and says, hey, pervert. Uh, what are you doing? You're not pointing to a valid value. Same is true if I enumerate past the end of the list. For example, if I say rater dot move next, and then control L, control V, console right line rater dot current, that'll give me a 25 because 25 is the first item in the sequence. But if I move next to 25, then move next to 34, then move next to 32, and then move next off the end of the list, and control a 5, exception again, saying enumeration already finished. What are you doing? So hopefully you're scratching your head a little bit, thinking, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Huh? Okay, so the old version, through exceptions, that's cool. But how did we do enumeration before yield? Okay, obviously array list is providing enumerators before the yield thing, and the yield thing is how we generally provide enumerators now, 99% of the time I, throw, I use yield, but how did we do enumeration before that? Well, good thing you asked. It's actually educational to see why, and I'm going to show you why. I'm going to come back here. Actually, I'm going to control Z most of this. Control Z, control Z, 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 Z. I want to get back to me list right here, and let's comment out the for each again, and I'm going to say move next. so that should move us to the 25, and then current should be 25, let's just verify that works with the yield, let's pretend yield does not exist, let me show you how we did enumeration before we had the fancy yield, I told you that an enumerator is an object that iterates another object, which is the sequence, this object, this data structure here, and in our case we're enumerating a list, this enumerator enumerates this list. Well, in order to instantiate an enumerator, we have to make a class that is instantiatable. And that class will be our enumerator. So before we did yield, we actually had to write our own classes to do this enumeration. And we generally do these as nested private classes so that people outside of the list that we were writing or the data structure we were writing need not be concerned about the concrete implementation. We just simply implement the iEnumerator interface 
and be done. So let's write our own enumerator. I'll say class me enumerator numerator. Notice that this class is private. It is nested inside of me list. Private is the default. If I could spell private, that'd be even better. But private is the default. So I'll leave that off. I need to implement I enumerator of type T because we're a list of type T, even though our close type here is an int. It could be char, it could be string, it could be any type. So we need to be an I enumerator of type T. This T is the T that's passed into me list. I'll control dot on this. Visual Studio says, ooh, do you want me to throw in all the interface functions for I enumerator? I say yes. And look at all this stuff we get. We get current. We've seen current. We've used current. Oh, we also get a dispose. Go figure. We get a non-generic current. I told you how Microsoft shipped the stuff before adding generics to the language. If I click on I enumerator and hit F12 to look at the definition, you'll see that the generic I enumerator implements the non generic I enumerator from way back in the day. And it also implements I disposable. That's why we have a dispose function here. We have a move next, which reports whether we have another valid item or not. And then, unfortunately, they added a reset. Back in the day, they were trying to make their best guesses as to how these things would work. And they decided, let's have a reset function because you're going to enumerate to the end and maybe you want to go to the back to the beginning. And so you'll call reset. And reset would reset you back to the beginning, much like a typewriter when you typity type type and you get to the end and you hit, hit the bar and go back to the next line same idea reset and i've never called this i've never seen anyone call it generally we just for each or we enumerate and we throw the old enumerator away and if i want to iterate again then i'll just get another enumerator so this reset although it was a good idea back in the day it's actually not used in fact with yield right now we're using yield and get enumerator watch what happens if I call Raider.reset, Raider, I know I just moved you to the 25. Let me reset you back to the beginning. Control F5, run that. We get a, hey, a specific method is not supported. Not supported exception. The implementation of yield, the compiler, when the compiler implements yield, it just throws a not supported exception. I don't support resetting. Somebody had, thought that was a good idea back in the day, and it turned out to not be a good idea. So... So I'm not going to support it. So in our enumerator, we won't support it either, though it could be actually easy to support. We are making an enumerator that will iterate over items in a list. This enumerator has to track where it's at in the list, and so we'll do that very simply with an index. We'll make a variable called index, and each instance of me enumerator will keep track of its own index. So let's add an index here. Int index. The default value for index is a zero. The zeroth item is 25. We actually want to be the sentinel value at the beginning. So what we'll say is index gets negative one. And then the next function which the user should call or for each should call for us is move next. So I'll actually put move next here. Move next should return true as long as there's another item in the sequence. So if index is 0, return true. Index 1, return true. Index 2, return true. In the case of this list, maybe we have another list that's longer. Or maybe we have another list that's shorter, just two items instead of three. So index 0 and 1. It completely depends on the list that we are iterating over. And so the enumerator, in order to retrieve the items to return for current, it needs to know the list, but it also needs to know the number of items in the list. And both of those are tracked up here. Count is the number of items in the list, and items is the actual array that stores the list. So me enumerator needs to know the instance of the list that it is enumerating. We can solve that problem simply with a constructor argument. We'll say give me a me list of type T the list. And we also need to store that internally. Me list of type T the list. This dot the list gets the list. And there we go. We're tracking the list that we are enumerating over. In a previous video, I showed you how we can have two enumerators over the one list. I could easily make uh, multiple enumerators over multiple lists, that sort of thing. Move next is easy. We just say index plus plus. And then we need to return index less than the list dot count. 
as long as index is less than the number of items that the user has passed in or added to the list, then we're good to go. In fact, I'm going to be tricky here and move this to a pre-increment so that we pre-increment index, and then as long as that is less than count, then we're good to go. Current, uh, to do current, it depends on if we want to throw an exception or not. We've seen how if we access current but we're not actually on a valid item, then current will just return the default value, and I believe that's because they're using yield to do that. I don't really care. We could throw an exception or we couldn't, but we need to ensure that we do one or the other. So let's come in here and we'll say if index is less than zero or the list dot count is less than or equal to index, then we know our index is out of bounds. And so let's return default of t that says give me the default value for t for value types that's generally zero for reference types that'll be the null reference you can look at default in my generics playlist otherwise we want to return the list dot items sub index that'll return the current item dispose we only have dispose because I, the generic enumerator implements dispose, so I'll just take that out. We'll do nothing on dispose. Then current, for the non-generic current, it's real simple. In fact, generally, hopefully this never gets called. But if it does get called, we shall just rely on our current here, the generic version. And T, well, everything implements objects. So I can just say, hey, return current. And this current will resolve to our public current. It won't resolve to this specific one. To resolve to this specific one, I'd have to cast the, this reference to a non-generic uh, enumerator and then call current. Go watch my interface videos if you want to learn more about that. But when I say return current here, that'll resolve to, the, to this code, and we're good to go. The reset function, uh, we have two options there. We can say, hey, it's not supported, just like it's not supported, come on, just like the built-in, the compiler will do with the built-in yield statement. Or we could actually support reset. It wouldn't be that hard. We could say index gets negative 1, and that would reset us back to the sentinel value. Either way, I don't really care. In fact, if this is getting called, then then they haven't been doing .NET long enough. Oh, whew, what an exercise. Let's, let's see if our for each works. I'm going to comment this out, comment this out. Let's just... Bring the for each back in. Control K U. In fact, let's just get rid of this. This is just this is just helper code I was doing or demo code. And let's get rid of our yield here. We need to return a me enumerator, uh, but we need to pass the list in, the current list in. So return new me enumerator on me or on this. In Visual Basic, we actually say me instead of this, which I kind of like. But return enumerator, which will enumerate over this and I think we're good to go. Let's control F5 just to make sure the output is what we expect. 25, 34, 32. Yes, we're not using yield. We could actually step through this. Let's hit F11 and F11, F11, instantiate the array, F11, add that item, add that item, add that item. For each in my party ages, this will get us to the get enumerator, which we return a me enumerator. We pass ourselves into the constructor. Index default value to negative 1. We save away the list. F11, F11, F11. Move next. Index is negative 1, but when we plus plus index, that'll go to 0. 0 is less than 3, so there is another item. So for each says, okay, give me the current item. I hit F11 there, but it didn't show us the call to current there. But we got a 25. Move next, same thing. And now we get a 34. I'm actually going to put a breakpoint in current just to prove that current is being called. F11, 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 move next. Yes, there's another item. F11, here we are in current. Index is not less than zero. And list.count is not less than or equal to index. So let's return item sub index. Items sub index or sub 2 is a 32. So we return that. I becomes the 32. We print the I. Move next returns false here because 3 is not less than 3. We're done. Iteration's complete. And then look at this. The dispose function is called. Hmm. I'll talk about that in the next video.